Hey there, Pat Draw, Colorado Real Estate Experience. It's a cold, really cold day in Denver, Colorado. So cold that um, it's actually a holiday, President's Day, and I decided to come in the office and do a little video on uh, a question that was asked to me the other day by a couple people just in a group. So I thought maybe I would address it here um, and throw it out there. Sorry about looking a little bit like a lumberjack today, but given the fact that it's not even 20 degrees out and it's really cold in my office, um, I'm wearing this attire. So with that said, it's the real me. So here you go, um, closing costs or how much cash do I have to have, generally speaking, when I come to the table? Now this is for the most part geared towards first time home buyers, but it could be anybody. Um, but we're gonna make some assumptions uh, just to really get an explanation that's somewhat simple and quick without drawing it out because there could be a bunch of different things. But the bottom line is this, um, depending upon what you're putting down, there's always gonna be the down payment plus the closing costs, okay? So those are two kind of collective things that come together when it talks about how much money do you have to bring to the table? Because that's a very generic and a very broad question. So that number would break down somewhat similar to this. And here's what I tell people. Um, the two most commonly used programs for down, uh, for down payment when it comes to first time home buyers um, is FHA, which is three and a half percent, so 3.5, or uh, the conventional first time home buyer program, which is 3%. So generally speaking, first time home buyers have to have a minimum of three or three and a half percent down, that's your down payment, plus whatever closing costs are gonna end up costing you uh, in the long run. And now those vary. Um, and to be honest with you, most of them are not lender based, they're most based off the process itself. So you have your lender costs, which, you know, usually I would say under 2000 bucks. And then you have on top of that, generally speaking, your title costs, your appraisal costs, and then you have what they call impounds or escrows, which are also is going to be like your taxes and insurance. So I usually use a round number and depends on how much you're spending on a house. But I will always tell people be prepared for four to $5,000 and just general closing costs, plus your down payment. All right, so that's kind of in a nutshell what you're looking at. So let's take the simple approach. Say you're buying a $400,000 house, 3% down is $12,000, plus just call it, like I said, for simplicity, call it $5,000 in closing costs. That's a total of $17,000 that you would have to have to close. Now, there's a whole other part to that. When you write an offer on that house, um, what they require is what they call earnest money. And the earnest money, generally speaking, is about, um, call it roughly a percent, or sometimes a little bit less, but call it about 1% of the, of the purchase price of that house. So if you assumed on this particular example, you put down 1% of a $400,000 house, that's four grand, right? So that's already been put down. So that's something you have to put down up front. Um, and then you look at uh, kind of really the, the, the question revolved around, what do I got to bring to the table? When it's all said and done, what do I have to have at the closing table? So simple, whatever you put down in, in earnest money, minus that, 3% or three and a half, depending upon which loan program you're in, minus the closing cost. So let's, in this example, $400,000 house, $4,000 earnest money, all right? So we, took, we used our closing cost in the down payment of $17,000 and subtract out the $4,000 earnest money, you would walk in to the closing table with roughly $13,000 left over to pay, roughly. Now that's a very um, generic, a very broad scope, uh, example, but it does kind of give you a rough idea. You can do some rough math in your head just to kind of get it figured out. Um, I'd love to help you out more. You have all my contact information right here below. So feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you figure out your scenario, which could be less or more depending upon your situation um, and the timing of it. So have a great day and uh, look forward to speaking to all of you at some point in time in the future.